Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and my next project, the Tamiya 148 scale Fairy Swordfish Mark II. So welcome. Um, as the intro says, I am building my Tamiya 148 scale Fairy Swordfish Mark II uh, that I got from Eric Davenport. So Eric, if you're watching, thanks for the kit. This looks like a really good one. So first, let me tell you how this uh, video is going to be laid out so, you know, you can maybe utilize it to your personal needs. I am going to break it up into chapters um, that will be listed below. So if you don't want to see what's in the box, you can skip ahead or whatever. Uh, so just to let you know, it's all going to be broken up into chapters. That way you can view the parts that you really want to view. First, this kit is going to be what I'm going to call a back to basics kit, back to basics build. And really what that means is I'm just going to build it, um, build it and paint it out of the box for the most part um, with little to no weathering. I'm just going to keep it real simple um, as far as the paint, the construction and all that. Just because sometimes whenever I do a build, um, it goes along quite well until we get to the uh, weathering stage. And at that point, things get a little more hectic and not as concise because I tend to do things differently every single time. And there's experimentation that goes on and it's just not the best for videos. So, and because I just want to have a nice relaxing build and uh, not deal with all the weathering stuff because that's the part that takes the most um, mentally, let's say. So let's get into it and see what is gonna happen with this kit. So the first thing, um, I'm gonna build the kit straight from the box with the exception of uh, the Tamiya photo etch set specifically for this kit and I'll talk about talk about that a little bit whenever I actually show everything I'm going to be using for this build. Um, other than that it's just going to be the basics uh, with a focus on build quality and finish quality. So I'm really going to focus a lot on seams making sure you know sprue gates are really cleaned up well and I just want it to be a real solid build with a real solid paint job on it. The only weathering, quote unquote weathering, I may do on it, I may do a little bit of fading or, uh, you know, dirty up the tires a little bit. I may add um, some rust to the uh, exhaust and uh, maybe some exhaust stains and maybe a little bit of paint fading, but I'm not gonna go through with a lot of, you know, chipping and scratching and worn down walkways on the wings and all that kind of stuff. I'm just gonna keep it very simple stuff that's gonna be very easy to convey on the video for anybody that's watching that wants to follow along and maybe uh, duplicate what I'm doing. So let's talk a little bit about the kit. To me, a 148 scale Fairy Swordfish Mark II. And uh, the kit number is 61099. Um, it's a typical box. It's got a uh, color scheme on the side here for the 18th Squadron out of Tanzania. Uh, right here, it actually shows the photo etch set, which again, I will talk about. It does come with three figures, which I think I'm going to use. And uh, yeah, copyright 2007. So it's a fairly new kit. And from everything I've read and seen, uh, it's a really good one. And it goes together well in typical Tamiya fashion. Before we get to the actual uh, kit or box contents, um, I'll talk a little bit about what I'm going to be using um, as far as tools, supplies, and stuff like that. For the tools, the usual suspects, my Tamiya and Zuron cutters. This for the rough stuff. This for the fine cutting of sprue gates. 
the old X-Acto knives, the one for plastic, the one for photo etch, tweezers, a couple of different kinds. This one's I use for the kit. This one I use for the um, decals. My usual assortment of clamps, usually consisting of my X-Acto clamps, small and large, and these spring-loaded, inexpensive clamps here. Uh, if need be, which I doubt, I've got my files handy. I've also got a various um, assortment of sanding sticks, sponge type, narrow type, rigid of different um, grits, and then I've got some of the micro mesh dual angle. I've got a whole set of those. Um, if I need to do any really fine work, I have my polishing pads here. And uh, yeah, if I need to do any rescribing of panel lines, I have my straight edge. I have my needle type scriber. And then I also have somewhere, it's not out right now. Uh, my other scriber and then little clamps for holding parts to paint photo etch bending tool if needed photo etch shear if i need that and uh drill bit set because there are some holes that have to be drilled from the inside of the aircraft to accommodate exterior components. So that's pretty much the tools I'm going to be using. If I have anything else that uh, comes up, I'll be sure and mention it. Also with the tools, I almost forgot, I will be using an assortment of airbrushes depending on what I am doing. For example, we're spraying primer. I'll be using my Iwata Revolution SAR. Uh, siphon feed because it is a uh, 0.5 nozzle so it's nice and large-ish I may use that for clears as well um, but maybe not uh, the one I'll probably use the most is my Iwata HP M2 single action which is just stellar for doing all kinds of paint stuff if I need detailed paint stuff I will probably use my Neo for Iwata TRN1 uh, trigger style double action. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the airbrush stuff. All right, next up, what products am I going to use? Well, I'm going to be using my usual Tamiya Extra Thin and Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting. I will be using Model Master Liquid Cement, which is a little bit thicker for some applications. I may be using Clear Parts Glue. Since there's Photo Etch, I will be using the Ammo by MIG Black Slow Dry CA Glue. I also have my Thin CA Glue if needed. Oh, uh, let's see. For I've got my micro set micro saw for decals as well as Walter's saw the set if the decals are especially stubborn. For paints, for the most part, I will be using Mr. Hobby Aqueous. Now, just because I put a color out here doesn't mean I'm going to be using this color. I'm just using it for examples. So, you know, there you go. Uh, Tamiya Acrylic. For brush painting, I will be using Vallejo Model Air. Vallejo Model Color. For the tires, since this is pretty much all I ever use this one for. I will be using the AK third generation acrylic modeling colors, which brush paint really well. Um, various cleaners, thinners, the 
depending on the paint. Um, again, since I'm not going to be doing weathering, I'm not going to have any weathering products involved. The only thing that may come into use is uh, maybe the rust colored Obtenum 502 and maybe the Abtelune 502 for washes because I will be doing washes just to enhance the panel lines and stuff to make it look a little bit better. Other than that, again, if I come up with anything else I'm going to use, I'll mention it as the build progresses. All right, so next up, let's take a look at the um, box contents. So let's start with all the flat stuff first. So you have the good old Tamiya instructions. It's quite a thick little uh, book, I must say. Um, laid out like usual. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on this. Um, I'm just going to be real brief. Uh, I've got all the colors here, recommended tools, and then we have uh, the different... You have to select prior to assembly uh, if you want to do A, B, or C version. In my case, I'm going to be doing the C version. And the reason being is because I really dig, uh, I like how the uh, camouflage comes down on the side more. And the underneath is uh, that really cool British sky color, which has kind of got kind of a greenish cast to it. I really, really like that. And I like the fact, you know, like I said, that the camouflage comes down the sides um, a bit. The, the white, you know, if I ever build one again, I'd probably do one of these. But for this one, that's the one I'm doing, C. So I'll have to watch as I build for anywhere where C pops up so I know what to do. Um, instructions, just the usual thing. Cockpits first. Um, if I deviate from the instructions, I will explain why and uh, go from there. Um, there's some making holes for photo etch bracing wire. So since I am using the photo etch, I will have to make these holes something else to look out for in the instructions. Uh, apparently the, um, it even comes with like this groovy little tool. And uh, again, I'll talk about that once I get to the photo etch. But then there's all these parts and you know, all this stuff here. On and on. Uh, one thing you can, you can, you can either uh, extend or fold the wings refer to these marks for assembly so it tells you what to do if you're doing uh, the extended wings so you look for this if you're doing extended wings you look for this if you're doing folded wings so you've got right here um, if you're doing the closed wings you have to cut off certain things in order for the parts to work properly now, since I'm using the crew, I'm not going to do the folded wings because that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for a bunch of guys to be sitting in an airplane with the wings folded up because they ain't going nowhere. That's just silly. Uh, folded wings, folded wings, folded wings, folded wings. So most of this stuff, uh, I'll just be skipping because uh, I'm not doing it. Um, also, it shows where photo etch parts are supposed to go. So that's something else to keep in mind. Um, there are separate parts for folded wing uh, braces, struts, whatever you call them, and for the extended wings. So that's something else to keep in mind. Then it's got all the bomb racks and all that kind of stuff. Then you have the exhaust that goes there, which is kind of cool because... Um, that means the exhaust stains would be back here, so it'd make it a little bit easier to do the exhaust without getting too involved. So yeah, pretty groovy. And then right here shows the photo etch bracing wires. And the reason I went with this, I was originally just going to use Easy Line or something like that, but apparently these bracing wires on the real aircraft are flat. They're not just regular wire type deals like on most biplanes. So that's why I went with the uh, extra photo etch stuff. I thought that would just add a little bit to it, make it look a little bit better. Um, more stuff. See right here. This is only on aircraft B, so I will not be using that. 
So I'll X that out since I'm not going to be using it. And uh, other than that, most of the um, stuff done on this aircraft are common to all three versions with the exception of course of the paint and markings uh, we have a which I'm not doing so I won't be using so I'm doing C so yeah I'll have to pay attention to that because this has got like a plate with a smaller light it looks like so yeah C that's not uh, C I'm doing that so we gotta pay attention to that so A not doing that I am doing this so I'll have to I'll have to keep an eye on that so anyway it's just a matter of paying attention then when we get back here after the 24 building steps then we come to the marking options so we've got A which is 836th Squadron, Mac Ship, Amastra, Amastra, 1943-44, which is crazy, a biplane going on up into 1944. Tells you how good those things were. Then we have B, which is 816th eight, 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 Squadron, the HMS Tracker, 1943. And then we have 810 Squadron, Tanzania, 1942, which is the version I'm doing. So that is the instructions. There's also a uh, important information concerning this kit, warning you, I guess, not to eat any of the parts or drink the paint or whatever, just kind of that warning stuff. Then this right here, which is pretty cool, this is the Fairy Swordfish Mark II, and it's the color scheme camouflage deal. Now it's kind of big, so it's not going to fit on the... Uh, on the uh, this is the A uh, the A markings so it's kind of that's pretty cool um, so what we got here I'm thinking I'm pretty sure this is to scale this is 148 scale so I'll be able to make copies of this upper wing stuff and the tailplane stuff, I'll say C right there. That's what I need for C. Yeah. Um, and then it has the B tail stuff there. So I'll be able to just make copies of this and make masks, which I'll talk about when it comes time to paint the stuff. Um, I can just make copies of these if they're to scale, which I'm pretty sure they are. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, they're to scale. That's epic. So I'll be able to use these to make ma make masks a little easier um, to do the paint job. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. That's a nice addition. One thing I will have to do is I'll have to uh, enlarge these on a copier or something or a printer um, so I can make the masks for the sides, but that's no big deal. That's what I usually do for my British aircraft. Uh, then we have, this is kind of cool. I haven't seen this in a while. It gives you this little fold-out brochure deal showing all these different kits. Now I haven't looked to see if these are modern kits or if they're just any of their kits from the old days and the new days. But it uh, looks like looks like newer stuff. Uh, especially going off the uh, sets here. They look pretty good. But you know that's kind of a cool little addition to the to the kit. That was one of the things I used to really like whenever I'd get a kit. They they actually had full color fold out little pamphlet catalog things so you could check out all the cool kits they had so you could say, yeah, I want to build that one someday. All right, enough of that. Then we got the old uh, decals. I'm not going to actually take them out because it's sealed right now and I don't want them just, you know, falling all over the place. But um, 
So I don't know. I'll talk about them. Yeah, I am going to open it right now because I want to see. What kind of quality they are. Now to me it makes good quality decals. It's just sometimes they're kind of thick or you know whatever. But uh, these don't look bad. These look pretty good. So it's kind of cool. Um, now this is something different. I've, I've seen this before. This is kind of cool because uh, these go on the propellers and they have these diagonal slashes on the propellers and it's all molded onto one piece. So that'll be easy to kind of put up, be easy to put on there. I may not, I may, well, I probably won't use that. I may use this part here, but I'll, I'll be painting the, the propeller tips just because um, I don't want to have to worry about matching the yellow. And then we have uh, the, um, what you call uh, decal seat belts and then all the markings blah 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 cool they look like good decals though they don't look like they're overly thick like some of them can be at times so there's that all right so let's take uh you know what let's go ahead and look at this real quick this is the photo etch for the kit it is item 61069 fairy so swordfish photo etch bracing wire set for experts i wish i'd have known that before i bought them just kidding this stuff's actually pretty easy to use but it looks like a nice set it's got some stuff for the uh, engine other assorted stuffs looks like a gun sight maybe right there that's pretty cool did not have that and this is a little tool that is supposed to help uh, clear out some of the holes for the uh, bracing wire set you may be thinking wow that's gonna be a flimsy tool well not really because this uh, photo edge is really stout I don't know if it's stainless steel or nickel or what it is but to me, is uh, photo which is generally pretty, uh, pretty robust, which is kind of nice. So, yeah, that's the only aftermarket thing I'm using on this kit. So next, let's take a look at the sprues themselves. So first, we have the A sprue. Zoom in a little bit here so you can see what's going on. Um, I'm not going to do a whole lot of blabbing about these, but the figures look really good for 148 scale figures. So that will make it a little bit easier to paint. And I, I'm just going to keep the painting basic on these guys because they're going to be in their, in their seats in the aircraft. And I'm not going to get in all the fancy shading and stuff. I mean, I may do a little bit, but I'm probably going to cheat and do like, you know, dry brushing type stuff because that's really small and that'd be kind of tough to... You know really do some detailed painting although there are tons of people who can do it i'm just not one of them now there are some push pins uh, ejector pin marks on the inside and i'll look and see what needs to be uh, removed um, and you know again depending on how much is visible once it's put together and the pilots or the uh, the crew is in place uh, some of these may not have to be, you know, removed at all. But we'll take a look at that uh, when we get there. So that is sprue A. Then we got sprue B. The uh, horizontal stabilizers, tailplanes, whatever you want to call them. Rudder. Um, the upper wings. Bracing, I'm assuming, the central part of the wing. Sprue B. Sprue C, uh, the part of the lower wings here, this is the upper part of the lower wing, bracing, more of the central part, more bracing here, uh, these are panels, um, part of the wing panels, just a bunch of bracing, some smaller parts there, Sprue C, Sprue D. So we have some engine parts, 
um, cockpit parts yeah see the way this thing is laid out here where the where the pilot and the crew goes I'm not sure you're gonna see much of that cockpit at all but you know again we'll see once we get to it radio um, seat seat instrument panel all kinds of little small cool groovy parts two sprue E's on each sprue you get bomb parts uh, rails for the um, ordnance for the bombs and rockets and all that kind of stuff uh, half a torpedo and the other half of the torpedo is on the other E sprue so you're basically getting double of everything here so you have enough parts for all of the uh, bombs rockets whatever other kind of stuff they were dropping on the enemy back in those days sprue sprue F clear parts so these are the leading edge uh, wing leading edge lights uh, this I believe is like a little window that was at the feet of one of the crew members and then the windscreen there all looks pretty good pretty clear clear as you can get these styrene parts I reckon sprue G the lower part of the lower wing and right here are the hole or the indentations the guiding points for drilling the holes from the inside for the rails and stuff more wing bracing other small parts sprue G and sprue K so I'm assuming this is the fuel tank Either that or it's a really big water jug for when they go on long flights and then this these uh, two parts here uh, K three and four which won't be used on the version I'm doing and other little small parts so oh and this is the part that I will not be using on the wing that I mentioned earlier it's like a little plate thing that goes on the leading edge has a smaller light I would assume so that it's sprue K. So that is basically the contents of the box. So if you've seen everything you want to see, now's the time to click out because I'm going to turn the camera around and show how I have everything laid out for whenever I build a model. So if you don't care about that kind of stuff, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. For the rest of you folks, let me turn the camera around and I'll show you how I lay my desk out for when I'm working on a kit. All right, so here it is. Um, this is just for, you know, if anybody, like beginning people, just maybe want some organizational ideas or whatever, this is how I do my thing when I build a kit. This is just extra bonus material, no extra charge. This is free, so enjoy. So I have all my paint stuff and uh, supplies over here parts and stuff down here. I usually keep the box of whatever kit I'm building on top of that cabinet right there. Then up here on the desk I keep all my tools, my cements and everything on the right as I'm using them. I just pull them out and set them over here and use them. Uh, sanding sticks, um, parts holders for painting, all of my brushes, decal stuff, airbrush stuff here, airbrush stuff there and all of my assorted tools and everything that I use with practically every single build gets put right up along in here. Paint turntable there. Notebook usually goes right down here so I can keep notes for what I'm doing on a particular episode so I can put that in the description box. Now here's the part that some people may not do you know because a lot of people have their stuff all set up like this it's not any you know like earth-shattering news but one thing I like to do is I like to hang my parts up on this pegboard for easy access while I'm building 
and I do an alphabetical order. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The reason F is over here is because it's very small and it fits in that little spot and it's something I don't use very much. And then K goes right there. So that's the way I like to lay out my model parts. Now, if I have like a kit that's got a whole bunch of interior stuff and just a whole lot of sprues, I've got all kinds of room up here to put more sprues. So that way I have everything close at hand. I'm not having to pull the box out and pull the stuff out. You know, it's up on the back, easy access and out of the way. So that is how I have everything laid out. So let me mount my camera back where it goes and I'll wrap this video up. All right, so there you have it. That is the kit, that's the plan, and uh, etc. So stay tuned for the next video where we'll actually start working on the kit. So as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and the intro video for the Tamiya 148 scale Fairy Swordfish Mark II. So until next time, I will see you all later.